corporate finance practice problem using OneNote. Dividends in arrears paid off through issuing stock. Get ready. It's time to take our chance with corporate finance. Here we are in OneNote. If you have access to OneNote and would like to follow along, you're not required to, but if would like to, we're in the icon, left-hand side, the Practice Problems tab, then down in the 1730 Dividends in Arrears Paid Off Through Issuing Stock tab. Also note, when using OneNote, look at the Immersive Reader tool. Presentations will be mirrored in the text area, same name, same number, but with transcripts, transcripts that can be translated into multiple different languages and either listened to or read in them. Closing the icon up, we have our information up top, calculations then on down below. We're looking at the preferred stock again, the idea of the dividends accumulating upwards. So remember the general rule being for the preferred stock versus the common stock, they typically will be paid first. So if the corporation wants to issue dividends, then they'll typically have to issue them to the preferred stockholders. Once they clear the cap or threshold, they can then issue to the common stockholders. They could decide not to issue dividends, but when doing so, typically you're going to have an increase or an accumulation of the preferred stock, which again, you would have to pay off until before you could pay off the common stockholders. Now, the common stockholders are the, basically the owners and they, they have voting rights and whatnot. And therefore, that could annoy them if the preferred stock is getting somewhat high so that you would think that they would want to pay them off. So in this scenario, we're going to come up with a plan basically to pay them off with the issuing of common stock. Uh, to get the debt relieved in that point. Remember the general idea with the preferred stock and common stock is that if times are bad, things are going downhill, you might want the preferred stock to kind of hedge that situation because you'll more likely to get paid before the common stockholder in that case. But if you're, uh, if times are good, then in times going up, then the common stockholder will typically have an increase in either the value of, of their stock and or the increase in the dividends as they increase past a certain threshold, whereas the preferred stock will cap off at some point in time. Okay, so we have the preferred shares are 600,000. Preferred dividends per share is going to be nine. The years in arrears, so the, dear, the years that have not yet been paid, we're going to say seven years have been accumulating upwards where they have not paid the preferred stockholders and therefore haven't paid dividends to the common stockholders easier, you would think. So the company would like to provide new common stock to the preferred stockholders. So in other words, we're going to imagine a situation where they're going to say, hey, look, we don't have the cash to pay off the preferred stock. How about we come up to an agreement with the preferred stockholders to then issue them common stock for the paying off of the preferred stock debt? So we'll have to calculate the preferred stock debt, then think about how much common stock would it take to pay off the preferred stock. Therefore, we'll have to value the common stock in some way. And we're going to do that by adding up the dividends that we're projecting out to be given over the next four years. Now that we've freed up the ability to do so, to give dividends to the common stockholders here by paying off the preferred stock, allowing us to do so. So we're going to say for the next four years, we're going to be paying common stock dividends of these amounts, 210, 220, 250, and 280. And then we have the earnings per share after four years that is estimated to be 4.35 and the price earnings ratio that we're, we're estimating to be 17. Using this information, we're going to value basically the cost of the stock and then think about how many shares it would take to pay off the preferred dividend in arrears debt. So the common stock value at the present value of the future dividends plus the present value of the future stock price after four years. So we get to do that valuation type of problem one a similar problem that we've seen in the past now but now in the context of paying it off with the dividend so if you want more practice problems on that kind of valuation of common stock you could take a look at some prior sections where we focus in on that in more detail but we'll be using a discount rate 13 percent to do that okay so first we need to calculate the dividends that have not yet been paid dividends and arrears uh, you can it might be called dividends arrear age or most people might at this point in English, I think in more straight English, just be saying the accumulation of the preferred dividends that have not yet been paid or something like that. So the preferred dividends per share nine is going to be the preferred stock shares. So there's nine or 600,000 shares out there. That means yearly they have to have preferred dividends of 5,400,000. Let's calculate that just for the fun of it. Give the calculator something to do here times nine. That's going to give us the 5400000 That's what has to be paid each year before, once again, you can pay the common stockholders. 
But we haven't, unless you decide not to pay the dividends at all, uh, in which case, again, the common stockholders don't get paid and they accumulate upwards, which is what they have done for seven years now. So if we multiply that times seven, then we got 37 million eight hundred thousand that is owed once again the common stockholders at this point probably saying hey look we've got to pay that off because we want some dividends too and you got to pay that off before we, we can get the dividends on our side and we we vote for the board of directors we're the common stockholder so uh they come up with the agreement saying hey we'll pay off that debt we don't have the cash but maybe we can issue common stock to pay off that debt so that's the plan that's the plan that we have. So we're going to value the common stock uh, at by doing this present value of the four years dividends that we're expecting to uh, give the next four years and the present value of the market value, which we'll determine using these factors down below. So we need to present value these cash flows in essence is going to be the idea. And then we'll present value the one uh, value after that. So first present value in these cash flows. So we're assuming that the common stock that we're going to issue to pay off the preferred stock people uh, will then have a dividend in the following four years. And we're going to present value that dividend of, of these amounts. So we're going to list them out here. And I would list them this way if you were going to put this into like an Excel table or something like this. Notice it's not an annuity. I can't because these payments aren't the same. So I have to basically do a present value of one bringing each of those payments back to the current day to do our present value type of calculation. So here's our amounts, uh, the 210. Well, let's put it, let's do it this way. And let's bring it down this way. So there's the first one's gonna be our 210. We're gonna present value it. Now, this isn't gonna focus in on different ways to do the present value. If you wanna focus in on just present value calculations, doing them with tables, doing them with Excel, doing them with math, we have a prior section where you could focus in on that. So here we're going to do it basically Excel. The idea being this one is one year out. We need to bring it back one year. Present value in Excel would look something like this. Present value of the rate. The rate is going to be that 13% comma. The number of periods is just going to be one because this is one year out. Notice also that the rate in Excel, we made an absolute reference with a dollar sign before the B and the 26. That means that if you were to copy it down, then that cell will not change if we were to copy it down comma the number of periods is going to be one also note that i didn't hard code the one we put the one over here in a cell reference so that when i copy that down it will move to the next cell to the number two so just in terms of excel that it could be good for the formatting if you want to practice that in excel we do work this problem in excel as well comma comma because it's not an annuity so we're, there is no payment function here and then we have the future value which is the 210 bringing it back to and that results in the 1.86 if we did that for the second year the dividend in the second year notice same thing equals present value the rate notice these two cells are the same because it's pulling from the 13 dollar signs representing the absolute reference number of periods now this cell changed d10 to d11 because it moved from this one down to two i didn't have to hard code it if i had hard coded it just typing in a one up top when I copy it down, it would keep a one and I'd have to change it to a two, which I don't want to do. So that's why the reference of the cell is nice. Comma, comma. And then we've got, uh, notice the E10 changed to E11. That's this 210 going down to the 220. So the 220, if we present value it two years back at the 13% is 1.72. If we continue that process down here, the third year here, the 2.5, if we present value that back three years at the 13% gives us the 1.73 and the 2.8 four years out. If we present value that back four years at the 13%, we get the 1.72. Adding these up, we then get the 7.03. So the 7.03 then is the present value of the flow of dividends uh, in the future for the next four years. So next, we want to think about what is going to be the, the value uh, or the price after four years. And we do that with this information. They gave us the earnings per share after four years is estimated to be the 4.35. The price earnings ratio is 17. So if you think about the second one, the price earnings ratio is going to be the earnings per share. It's calculated this way. Uh, we're going to take the price divided by the earnings per share is generally the, the price earnings ratio. And so 
you can plug that in algebraically, right? You could say, well, I'm, I'm going to back into the unknown. I'm not going to look for a different equation, but I'm just going to use the actual price earnings ratio equation, um, which is the price divided by the earnings per share equals the price earnings ratio. And then you can do that in a formula up top and then solve for the unknown, right? P is the, is the unknown. That's what we're looking for. The price plus the 4.35 equals the 17 solve for the unknown. If you did that in Excel, it would look something like this. The price would be the unknown, uh, which is 74th yellow. We put the answer in here. Earnings per share is the 4.35. And then the, the price earnings ratio is the 17. So then we can back into the price here. Bottom line is what I'm trying to get at is you don't need to memorize a formula to calculate the price because you, you're, you're just going to use the formula that they gave us here and then back into the unknown component of it using your algebra. So if we plug this into the calculator, we're going to say we got the 4.35 times the 17. That gives us about 74, 73.95. You could then, of course, double check it by calculating the price earnings ratio, which would be the 73.95 divided by the 4.35. And that'll give us our 17. Now that we have that, now that we have the price number, notice we calculated that price as if it was four years out. So we did the cash flow for four years of the dividends and then the price four years out. So we'd have to present value that back to period zero, back four years. So that'll be the present value of one calculation. Looks something like this. We would take the negative present value of the rate. Once again, the 13% comma. This time I'm just going to hard code four for four years that we're going to bring back because I'm not copying it down or anything like that. So I just put the note number four, hard coding mean typing it in there, comma, comma, because it's not a payment. And it's a, it's a, I'm sorry, not an annuity, but payment of one. And so we have then the future value, which is going to be that 74 about. So that brings it back then if we present value it to 4535. So the stock price that we come up to then is going to be the 45.35 plus the present value of the dividends that we came to up here and that's going to be the 7.03 that's going to give us the 52.38 about so it's rounded so that's going to be the stock price for one stock and now how many now the question is well how many of those do we need then to to uh, to settle the debt to the preferred stockholders so we could start giving dividends to the common stock as well so we have the dividends uh, that are owed dividends arrear age or in arrears or the dividends preferred dividends that have been accumulating for the last seven years that we got to pay off is thirty seven thousand eight hundred thirty seven million eight hundred thousand. So we have that and we're going to pay them off with the stocks that are worth the fifty two thirty nine. So dividing that out, that means we, we need seven hundred and twenty one five sixty five of them that would be 37800000 divided by 52.39 about so we got the 721 and uh, 565 there's rounding there's rounding involved which can be significant since we're in the millions here so take into consider the rounding but that's going to be the general idea of it so that we can pay them off and then of course we can get back to the situation hopefully where dividends can be paid to the common stockholders as well